we're at the end of the second chapter of Yoma. And the Mishnah is going to play a little bit of a number game, which is related to the just the daily tamid, the daily sacrifices. It's as if our discursus into the, the question of values, you know, the race to get up to be the first on the top of the altar, and then the takeover of the race by the, you know, the allotment has just triggered a discussion as to what kind of tasks were allotted by Rota. So we're going to finish discussing what is allotted by Rota. And then at the beginning of the third chapter, we'll then go back to the timeline of Yom Kippur, the timeline that we, we started out with and the, the timeline that was interrupted actually by the broken leg or perhaps by the, the murder of the young priest up uh, racing to get up on the altar. And the Mishnah, the fifth Mishnah, opens actually in a classic, classic style. Tamid, Karev, Betishab, Asarab, Achadasra, Bishnei Masa, Lofachot, Veloyoter. The Tamid was offered up by nine, by 10, by 11 or 12, no less and no more. And We've this. It's a such a classic, classic Mishnah style. We 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 must have seen this before. And of course, the one that jumps out is the opening of Masachet Megillah, which we're going to come to in a few months. Remember that the Masachet of the Megillah of reading the Scroll of Esther begins in exactly the same way. Megillah Nikrate. The Megillah is read rather than Tamid Karev. Okay, Megillah Nikrate. Tamila uh, Tamid Karev. It's read on the 11th, on the 12th, on the 13th, on the 14th, or the 15th, no less and no more. And of course, the Mishnah Megillah is talking about the date of the month. And it goes on to explain, of course, how it can be read on all, all of these days. But And we don't need to learn this Mishnah now. We'll get to it when we learn Megillah. But it's the same style. We have a list of, na- list of numbers. And then we have an explanation. And similarly with our Mishnah and Yoma, we're going to ask, Kate Sad, how does it work? In other words, how do all the numbers work? Okay, so let's let's go for it. At small Batisha, the Tamid itself with nine. And when we looked at the third Mishnah, actually, we had a list of a list of tasks which the are uh, allotted by uh, allotted by um allotment and this is actually for the tamid and actually there were 13 allotted but of those 13 four were actually related to the slaughtering the slaughtering the sprinkling removing the ashes from the inner altar removing the ashes from the candlestick so four were related to the real work on the altar and the other nine were involved in carrying the limbs up onto the ramp so now we're going to go, these nine that we're dealing with in the, our Mishnah, Ketzad at Smor Shah, how does it work? The sacrifice itself by nine. We're talking about the nine that are carrying the limbs of the animal, either from the where it's slaughtered to the base, to, to the halfway up the ramp. They leave the limbs halfway up the ramp. They go and say Shema, and then they come back and they carry the limb, either the same nine or a different nine, carry, we're not quite sure, carry the limbs up from the halfway up the ramp right onto the altar itself where they're burnt. So that, at small batisha, we need nine. And we need nine to carry the limbs. Bechag, biyad achat slochit shel maim, at sukkot, one of them has got a flask of water. Hare kan that means ten, because that's sukkot. We bring a water offering. We bring a we we offer water on the altar. We'll learn this in the Mishnah of Sukkah. We learn we offer water on the Sukkah after uh, after the uh, in addition to the sacrifices. And the Gemara learns from here, by the way, that this is to do with a morning offering. Bain Arbaim. What about in the evening offering? But Achadasra in the evening offering, there's eleven. Who at small tisha? The offering itself takes nine. And two are holding in their hands 
two logs of wood. There's actually a, a verse for it. I brought the verse on the source sheet. I hope it's here on the source sheet. Yes, it's in Vayikra, chapter, first chapter of Vayikra, when not new, b'nei Aaron kohen eish al mizbeach, v'archu eitzim al eish. They shall lay out wood on the fire. And the Gemara learns actually from here that we're talking about the, the evening sacrifice. In the morning, the, the, the altar's already burning. So in the evening, it's 11, nine for the, nine for the offering itself, and two are holding two logs of wood. On Shabbat, 11. U Shabbat, Bachadasa. Hu at Smobtisha, nine for the offering. U Shnai, Biadam Shnei, Bersire, Levona, Shalechem Hapanim. Two are holding in their hands the two handfuls of incense for the showbread. For the lechem hapanim, we're going to replace the showbread on Shabbat. And again, we've got a puzzle. This is from um, the parsha of um, Emor, so it's towards the end of Ayikra, and it's the mitzvah of the showbread velakachta solet ve'afita otash dem eschei chalot. And you're going to make twelve chalot, and uh, we're going to put them in rows on the altar. And then at the and then at the end it says v'natata ala marechet levona zaka, and on each row you are going to put pure frankincense levona zaka vehaitala lechem la askarai shel Hashem, and it's going to be on the bread as a remembrance an offering for god so the show bread needs pure frankincense levona zaka those are the two extras on shabbat so nine plus two makes eleven they're holding the frankincense and then finally, how do we get to 12? Ooh, Shabbat, 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 What about Shabbat that coincides with Sukkot? Biyad, Echad, Slochit, Shalmayim. Well, we start with 11. And then, of course, we need we still need the, the flask of water. So we're going to have the extra one with the flask of water. And that makes 12. So uh, the Mishnah has proved it's proved his calculations. Tamid karev, the tamid can be brought. But tishab asraba chadasa b'shneimas b'shneimasa lo fachot velo yoter. The tamid can be offered up by nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, no less, and no more. So we played the number game, and we've enumerated all the tasks. And of course, at a time when the mishnah is, is passed down verbally, because they didn't write down the mishnah till. Long, I would probably after the Gemara closed. You know, during the time of the Gemara, the Mishnah was known off by heart. So, if you needed a text in the Beit Midrash, they would have special people who memorize it. So, you'd say to someone, you know, start on the first chapter of Yoma, and he he just like a human tape recorder, he'd recite, and then when you you wanted him to stop, he you'd say stop, and he stop. So the Mishnah is laid out in a way that makes it easy to memorize because it was originally memorized. It was not written down. And maybe that accounts for this structure. We learn the numbers and then we learn how they work. What about what about if the animals are a little bit bigger and they need more people to carry them? Aisle. An aisle is a ram. An aisle is a ram. It basically, it's a... It's a sheep that's more than two years old. Two two years old. So, the tamid is going to be a um, a young. The tamid is basically a young lamb. An isle is an old ram, and it's bigger and it's heavier. It needs more people to carry it. Isle kareb achadasar. A ram is offered with eleven. So habasab chamishat. We still have five to carry the animal, but. Akravim v'hasolet v'hayayin b'shnaim shnaim. The innards are bigger because it's a much bigger animal. And there's more fine flour and there's more wine. The, more, the additional offerings are greater on the ram. At the end of Shekalim, we learned that all these different animals have got different quantities of flour and wine and oil with them. So there's more flour and more wine on the ram. So it needs an extra two people. What about a bull? Okay, a bull is a big animal. What are we going to do with a bull? Par karev be'esrim ve'arba'a. So the bull is offered actually by 24. So we, we need a lot of people to carry all the different parts. Harosh ve'haregel, harosh be'echad ve'haregel b'shnoi. So the head by one and the 
um, the legs by two. Okevaharegel, the tail and the hind leg. Okevishnaimaharegel bishnaim, the tail with two and the hind leg by two. Hechazev hagera, hechazev echad vehagera bishlosha. The breast and the neck, the breast with one and the neck with three. It must be a big neck for a bull. Shtei yadayim bishnaim, the two forelegs by two. Shtei tefanot bishnaim, the two flanks by two. Hakrovim vehasolev hayayin bishlosha shlosha, the innards, the fine flour, the wine, three each. So we're gonna, and that makes we uh, we if you if you have a look at the source sheet and do the count, you can assure yourself it does actually add up to twenty four. And the Mishnah asks, what are we talking about here? Be krav, be not sibor. We're talking about communal offerings. These are the communal offerings which are bought from the half shekel. They're offerings offered on behalf of the entire people of Israel. And the priests, by the way, are selected, are selected by, you know, by essentially by family group from all of the Kohanim and the people of Israel. They used to take turns to come up to the temple and to do the service. And, and that's why, by the way, it's so important to divide up the work between them. So everybody, ha everybody has a role. These are communal offerings. They're not individual offerings. And just like everybody contributes to the half shekel, all the Kohanim can contribute to the temple service. It's inclusive. It's not exclusive. So as far as the communal offerings are concerned, we need to distribute them round in this. In, we, we distribute them broadly. Aval. Aval. But Korban Yachid, as far as an individual offering is concerned, Imrat Salah, Kriv Makriv, if a single person wants to offer it up, he can offer it up. There's no obligation to spread out the privileges for individual offerings. Although hefshet benetuchan shall elu elu shavim, but when we flay them and when we dismember them, they both operate in exactly the same way. So there are some similarities, but there are important differences. And overall, the derech of the um, temple service is inclusive. We think about it as an exclusive act because it only applies to kohanim, but. You know, there are many, many Kohanim in Israel and they're sent by their villages. They're sent off with a send off when it's their time to play a role. And every Kohen who can, who's qualified to do so, does have the opportunity to play a role.